In this video, I'm going to go into more detail on identifying several fall species of edible mushrooms. But before we do, I would like to clear up a few misconceptions about mushrooms. One misconception is that mushrooms have no nutritional value. Nothing could be further from the truth. Many mushrooms, such as the hen of the woods, have been found to contain antioxidants and enzymes and minerals not found in other foods. Another misnotion is that the sun plays no part in the producing of mushrooms. In nature, the sun controls everything. Heat, humidity, rainfall. With artificial production, it's not necessary. They're grown in a controlled environment, but in nature, it's important. Fungus are parasites. They live off alive, dying, or decaying debris. The mushroom is merely the reproductive part or fruiting body of the fungus itself. Now the types I'm going to cover in this video are what's known as beginner's mushrooms because they're easily identified and not easily mistaken for any other kind. Before I get started, I want to explain the important role that fungus plays in nature. Fungus is the key factor in recycling natural material. It attacks trees and wood eventually breaking them down and returning them to the soil. Okay, let's start with the hen of the woods or as it's known to the oriental, the miyataki. This mushroom is one of the largest and most popular. The hen of the woods is a polypore fungus and very easily identified. By polypore, we mean on its underside, it has holes instead of gills, as can be seen here. Its underside and spore print are white. The upper part of the fruiting body resembles that of a dark cauliflower. Its petals and leaflets are normally brown. Now the hen of the woods prefers old, dead, or dying stumps predominantly of oak trees. Although I have on occasion found it growing on old maples such as this one. I have also on occasion found it growing in the crotchet trees like this one. Okay, we're out here hunting the head of the woods. <clears throat> and I've cut this one loose. Now on these, I take the whole mushroom. But, some of that extra around the bottom there, that's usually what I'll use to spread around and try to colonize more. And I'll show you that in just a second. Now, because this tree is ideal, I'm going to take and spread some around the back side of this tree. There's one other one growing off this tree. But, this is good medium for uh, growing this particular species. I will cut free this bit of extra. And I'll take that extra and I will utilize it. Spread it to other stumps. And as I said, this particular tree stump as well.
Now I'll place, place little pieces uh, where the roots come out of the ground at the base. Now this stump is dead and the spores will work their way into the ground and hopefully they'll hit in the right spot. Sometimes I also spread it around on the decaying debris at the base of the uh, stump or tree if it's old and dying. Now any pieces on the bottom that have a lot of dirt are just simply not worth cleaning and trying to salvage. These are good to spread around. Also you'll find sometimes uh, specimens of this species that are just literally covered with dirt. Uh, they're coming up in an area where there's too much dirt or sand and those also are very good just cut them out and spread them all over to uh, more prime location. Okay I have something a little different here for those of you who can't identify this this is a hen of the woods or Miyataki. The only difference is it's still an early stage. As you can see the petals are not yet developed. They're still quite tight. Now try to give as much information and uh, knowledge that I can on this video of the things I've learned over the years. Now this hen of the woods was not growing in the woods. It was growing right out in the open in someone's yard off a oak stump that had been uh, an oak tree that had been cut down. Completely out in the open, no shade, no nothing. And I've uh, found many of them this way. And they tend to not get big and open up unless you get an extreme amount of rainfall. Generally, if you don't get them, they tend to dry out. And these young ones like this are tight. They have a tight head on them. And they're excellent for deep frying because they're so thick and tight. And they're also good for drying. For if uh, you want to dry your mushrooms, these are good. If you find them drying already, you can take and slice them. Uh, put them on a, like a cookie sheet and dry them slow in the oven or, or by a heat register. Or if you got a uh, a regular uh, dryer, that works uh, probably the best. Here's a better view of the inside. As you can see, it, it has not opened up. Those little no nodules would actually open up in the petals. So again, there's an, an example and an illustration where there are always exceptions to the rule. Most of your uh, hen of the woods you're going to find in the woods, but I find them in people's lawns. I find them uh, not in the lawn itself, but in the lawn by oak trees, dying oaks, stumps. Uh, if there is a root buried there and you get enough rainfall, they can come up just in open grass, just not a clear blue. So that's why it's important to learn to identify them. Uh, so as you're uh, going along, you can find them. Now, I drive along and find a lot of stuff like this. I Because I'm uh, so familiar with identifying them, I actually spot these from the road growing up next to the tree. And then generally, I go ask permission if it's okay if I cut uh, these mushrooms out. Okay, we've got some shaggy manes here. They're still fresh and in good shape. As you can see, there's a few of them in this lawn. Some of them are gone. They're already done. Past the edible stage. Okay, I have here several examples of the shaggy mane mushroom. I'm going to attempt to give as much information as I can. If you look closely, you will see the shagginess of this mushroom. The elongated conical cap. 
It is white, but it can be easily identified. It is generally an open grassy area or meadow mushroom, but it can also be found in woods. Now I personally have never found great numbers in the woods, but it does come up in woods also. And I'm going to show the variance in the different stages. Okay, as you can see, it's shaped like a, a closed umbrella. And if we closely examine the underside, you can see that it actually goes down and touches the stem. Now, if you'll note, you can see, barely see that the gills are still white inside. This is a good stage of the mushroom. Here, the gills have barely begun to change. You can barely see that fringe and change. It is an ink cap mushroom. Here, and I'll open this up for example's sake. Let's open this. You can see it's slightly pink inside. But now the good one, let's open this up. The gills are completely white inside. The mushroom is completely white because it's uh, still in a young stage. As it matures, the gills start to change colors. Now this mushroom is still edible. And then it changes even more and matures. You can't eat the stage, um, preferably while it's still white is a choice, and eventually turning to black. Now I would like to stop and take a moment here to discuss a very, very important subject, and that is identification of uh, tree species and different types of wood. Now, before I do, this uh, mushroom, the shaggy mane, uh, the best areas I have found to find uh, a shaggy mane is in lawns, new housing, apartments, developments, parks. You can see them by the roadside, but generally you'll see more in uh, lawn areas that aren't that old three to five years is a good area to look for the shaggy mane. Anywhere where it's grassy and new lawns have been put in there. And now let's take a... Okay, here we have an unusually large cluster of shaggy manes. Now there's still some good ones in there so I'm gonna go ahead and pick them. Normally you don't find them in this large of clusters. But I have seen okay, this here's before. a classical example of a shaggy mane coming up in the woods. As you can see, it's quite wooded here. And this shaggy mane, right here, is in the middle of leaf and debris in the woods itself. One other thing I'd like to mention about the shaggy mane is that it dissolves quite rapidly depending on the temperature. The shaggy mane can be frozen or cooked immediately or boiled to stop the dissolving process. If put in a refrigerator, it will dissolve more rapidly. So I would suggest that you either eat them right away or boil them or freeze them or can them for later use. Here we can see a couple that have literally dissolved into a black goo or ink-like. I hope you have enjoyed this segment of Hunting Beginner's Mushroom. Be sure and watch part two of the video.